Welcome back. Today, we are going to bore you with information about air temperature. More specifically, inlet air temperature. And we're gonna talk you through why we run the charge cooler instead of an intercooler. And we're gonna go up the top in the office where Bobby is and we're gonna do some experiments and show you how they work and why we've decided to do this. So bear with us, it's gonna be a boring episode. That's right, folks, it's gonna be a meg episode. Stick around for the fun. Here's the clicker. No one would blame you. But you might learn something, and we might even learn something. So I'm gonna grab the lab coat and get on up the office. We're up in the office! Ricky Bobby! I brought uh -huh. the people up with the, Take the smart guy glasses off. I brought the people up. I was serving the net. Because we're gonna do the demonstration and the experiment <coughs> and show them about the charge cooler, intercooler, jag. Cooling the air. Cooling the air. S system. Like the, the climate. Yeah, the like what Greta wants us to cool the air. Uh, cool the air. Uh, she needs to chill. So we're going to talk you through the bits. Is this going to be a sensible one? This is going to be a sensible video. All right, all right. You get in your seat with your typewriter. Talk them through it. Charge cooling or intercooling? Mm. Run us through what we had on the Jag previously. Right. First of all, we have always on the Jag charge cooled. Charge cooled. Rather than intercooled. Yes. Yeah. Charge cooler. Why? Why? It sounds better already, doesn't it? It does. Charge fast. cooler. You want charge. Charge. You don't want inter. In inter what? In <laughs> inter. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer charge. Charge, charge, right. <sighs> Most people who don't like charge cooling don't like it. Normally two reasons. They either don't like charge cooling, uh, one, they haven't tried it and don't like it. There's a lot of things that we haven't tried and don't like. I already know I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to try it, which is why they talk like that. The other one is they probably tried it, done something dumb, haven't quite got it. So today we are going to explain in layman's terms, our terms, mm. redneck terms, mm. how charge cooling works in our heads. I want to state that in our heads. There'll be a lot of people go, hey, you've got that so wrong. Comment so in wrong. the comments. Comment. Whatever you comment, think. Complain if you want. Well, you, you can build it and you can fix it and you have some kind of understanding. Correct. Even if it's wrong understanding. Yeah. Well, let's start getting into the point so, then, rather than you talking about what's in your head. Here's our understanding of charge cooling. Right. First of all, one charge cooler. Charge cooler. This is the original one off the jack from the 1J motor. All right. I don't know if you want to look inside. A little zoom in. Ooh. It's basically an intercooler core. Yeah. Wrapped in a barrel. In the barrel. There's no airflow through it. As you can see, inlet outlet port for water, inlet outlet for intake air. All right. So if you blow in either of these and the air comes out either of these, you got a problem. They, that's, they, that's water injection. <laughs> that's water injection. That's not water injection. That's a to bent achieve. rod, man. That's a bent rod. So basically, there's an intercooler inside here, yeah, sealed up. Water surrounds the intercooler. Air in, air out. Hey, I don't know whether it's just people ask me or people ask other people, but this is a dumb thing. There is water in here. The water in here has nothing to do with the water in your engine for cooling, like your radiator. Nothing, nothing. I've heard that a few times. The, the, the water in here has as much to do with the water in your engine as the water in your engine has to do with your screen washer bottle. 
Now then, here's how it works. Standalone system water for the charge cooler. Needs pumping. One electric pump. Bosch. See the pump? Ooh, it's a Bosch. You like a Bosch? Bosch. Right. Bosch. One Bosch pump. You can, if you want, run a header tank, a reservoir. You can run it, they're all closed loop, but you can run it just with a little filler cap in a couple of the pipes. You need a radiator to cool the water that goes through here. What I'd like to do first is go back to our original setup in the Jag when we had the one jigs. We had a V mount in it. V. V. An opinion on a V mount. V. Yeah. So these two rads. Put this aside a minute. These yep. two rads here are both engine. Engine rads. Engine rads. But because on the Jag we had a very small nose, because we were running shallow nose, we run two shallow rads. For the link them together. These two are just for the engine. Hence you see the link pipe. And on the rads, one cooling fan for the engine, another cooling fan for the engine. This rad. Is the charge cooler rad? Charge cooler rad, laying down, laying down, laying down, laying down. <laughs> Seated here, as you can see, with the foam on the sides and the blah 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 blah. Sealed unit. Sealed unit. Right, and this sat in the car as such, with the big mount for the bonnet dead up front. The biggest problem with getting a charge cooler to work is the water that cools the charge cooler then needs to be cooled itself through a radiator. This is where most people get it wrong. Everyone hunts for somewhere to put the bomb. You can't put that wherever you want. It's this guy that's important. If you can get this rad direct up front, in air, fresh air, in front of everything else, well, you're don't bother. Pissing wind, you're pissing in the wind, you're mate. Get you're pissing trousers. in the wind. The amount of people I see say charge cooling don't work, they've got a conventional one single stand upright radiator for the engine and we'll put this behind it. You've That's got not... your engine trying to cool water from let's say anything from what from 100 to 120 maybe even yeah, more, maybe more down to what degrees. down to oh, oh, if you're lucky 70 degrees C. You put this behind it. This you're trying to cool from a bit above room temperature depending on how hot your intakes are to room temperature. Or lower if you can. You're gonna well, struggle with that. You're gonna struggle with that. You're gonna struggle with that. So why would you put this behind a radiator that is about 90 degrees? Well you wouldn't, Ricky Bobby. You bloody wouldn't. Would you? Well don't. I wasn't gonna. Well don't. I'm not going to. Good. That's alright then. So moving on. First rule, this guy right up front. And here's where we took a little stage further. To call this guy, another two fans. Two on the engine radiators. Two on the charge cooler rads. Now, these fans, spow, spow fans, spow fans, send us some fans, spow. Um, these fans, minute the engine was running and the pump were activated full time. Running, running, all the time, the minute the engine's running. Now, when you put this in here and turn it into a sealed box, whatever's dragged in through here has to go out through here. It's got no other choice. Exactly. Can't go nowhere else. So, we have constant cooling, even stationary, of the charge cooler. Don't worry about it cooling the engine too much. Because if you're running a thermostat, you can cool these as much as you want. These rads will not be in the circuit until your thermostat opens. So these can be freezing cold. Your engine's still going to be up to temperature if you're running a thermostat. Mm. Job's a good one. Got to be up front. And needs airflow. Talk to anyone. Don't hide it somewhere where it can't get any airflow. You don't you don't want it underneath your seat. What's that gonna do? Well depends if you've got cold farts. You you've got, got cold, cold farts. farts. I don't even know I've got cold farts. Don't Any put it in the glove box. Talk to anyone that works in a what's in tunnels called? Air tunnel. Talk to anyone that works in an air tunnel. I talked to a guy. I did talk to a guy. I know a guy. I know a guy. Hardest thing you can do. Push air through a radiator. Air does not want to go through a radiator. Air wants its easiest way home. So it'll wherever it can. So seal everything up, guide it in, force it through. 
basically fire the motor up, pump on, closed loop, independent water system on its own, through the radiator, out the radiator, in the charge cooler, magic, cools the core inside, back out, through the pump, back through the rad, lovely. You'll probably see on this one as well, got a little squirter in there, that's a little squirter. Quite big, we drilled it out. Yeah. Throttle body side. This is throttle body side. We just had a little squirt of meth just, just before the throttle body. Just to bring temps down a little bit as well. Stop a little bit of detonation. That worked for us well with that set up. Cooled it down nice. May or may not run it again. Don't know. Right. Right, then. Moving on. You may think this is a nice looking PWR charge cooler. I think that, that one, as far as I remember, that was bought new as well. That, he, uh, I think that was rated about 750 horsepower. That's the big boy. He's a big boy. That's quite big, apparently. He's a big boy, but that was the one, Jay. And now we're going for the 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 the, the fourteen J. I'm not sure if they do a fourteen J, but the horsepower we want it should be fourteen J. Right. Here That's we go. a big box. Right. What I most like, I just want to show real quick. We always thought this was quite big. I remember when that turned up, we were like, "Where the hell are we going to put that?" It he go, that could go in there quite nicely. That's, uh, yeah, I like it. That's me. Right, well, there is that. a slight difference in there because that, that's a charge cooler. That, that is a charge cooler. That is a charge cooler, but it's this is not quite. <laughs> right. This is sort of sold and known as an icebox. Whereas this would be a charge cooler. So when we got this, this was a complete box like flat across the top, but we've had to shape this to fit the bulge of the bonnet of the E-Type. So if I take the lid off for you. Oh, hang on, firstly. Yes. Why would someone buy an ice box? They do a charge cooler, you want an ice box. Right, you would buy an ice box mainly for if you're drag racing or sprint racing, hill climbs, any short period of racing where you need the air temps to be as cold as possible for a short amount of time. Where you could keep this at a consistent temperature for a lot longer. Until I stick it in the wall when it's no longer needed. So we've gone for the ice box mainly because we need it to be cold and we want it as big as possible to make as much power. But we are going to modify this ice box so we will still use ice knit for drag racing, hill climbing, any short stuff. But we're going to put walkways into it and use it when we're drifting or circuit racing as a charge cooler with a sealed lid. So we can do both. When we go drag racing, we will simply... So this is something we've already modified. So if I take this off, you'll be able to see in here. There's your core. There is your core. And we can still get all the ice, finger it all in there, get it around the core. And that'll be good for the drag race. And I'm gonna put a rubber seal around the edge and underneath to uh, make the Zeus fasteners blind. Not only that, not only that, like I said, when we go drag racing, what we'll probably do is Shut the pump down on the ECU and uh, just fill it with ice. Keep it cool. It's only got to do a quarter of a mile. But when we do some drifting, some circuit racing, some hill climbs, all that kind of stuff, we can then activate the pump. But to be honest, we put gauze in one of the outlets so it doesn't so hurt the pump. It'd basically be slush. We'll chuck the ice in, fill it up with water, turn the pump on. The hardest thing you've got to do is decide if you want red or blue. Red or blue. Got a temp sensor in this one. Might put another one in. Might put one here, one here. Basically check pre and post cooling. See how efficient this is. It's gonna be exciting stuff. If anyone is still actually watching this video. It's gay. There may be one person out there that's watching it. Can we start doing a demonstration of how this is gonna work efficiency wise? in comparison to, because everyone's going to be going, oh, why don't you just run in at the corner? It's so much simpler. You've got all this bollocks going everywhere. Water over here, extra pumps and extra radiators. Just put an intercooler in it and <coughs> stop trying to reinvent the wheel. Let me stop you. One thing I've always said to look at 
What are manufacturers doing? Big manufacturers. Lying about their emissions. <laughs> Other than lying about their emissions, they lie about a lot of stuff. Mm. They lie about stuff. Mostly in one part of the planet. Volkswagen. Anyhow, what they do like is performance. Performance. Performance cars sell, don't they? Everyone wants to go fast. fast. Everyone wants to go it's fast. And, oh, uh, yeah, I've just bought this new car. It's the slowest one available. Yeah, you all do that. You all do that. You all do that. And do you know what companies like doing? Wasting money. Mm. We do well. No. No. They don't like wasting oh, money. Oh, shit. That's why we're not a good car. Ah, right. Making money. Right. What are the manufacturers doing? You won't find much out there at the moment. Forced entry, that is on an intercooler. Are you going by now? Even diesel stuff. Diesel stuff, petrol stuff, all charge cooled. You own a bonnet of anything now, I'm not going to mention any names, but if it's straight six, V8, whatever, forced entry, and it's fast, open the bonnet, look at all them rads, look at all them little bits of rubber, look at all them shrouds, look at everything they got stuffed. It's all Do they just about... do it because they got money left over? No, 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 they don't, they, they don't make all them bits and design them and fit them just because they want to waste some money. They're, they're there for a reason, hmm. all right? Block it all off, it just to make it hard to take get it the air through, run yourself a charge cooler. Should we do an experiment? Experiment day! Experiment time! Right, here's our bench test. Very basic, as we told you. Well, it's only cooling water and air, isn't it? So it doesn't need to be anything fancy. Well, she can moan a lot about it on the news. Two different systems. One charge cooler, one intercooler, both made of metal. Don't particularly matter what metal, they're both metal. I mean, it's, it's not NASA. It's not NASA, it's not NASA. They're not made of metal. They're not made of metal. Right, air to air cooling. Air to air. Do you want to show them some air? Can you see the air? <laughs> oh, blood the hell, would you turn Sorry, it off? It's bloody freezing in here. Freezing. Charge cooler, bucket of water. Bucket of water in there, Stan. Bucket of water. water in there, Stan. Mm. Five a day water. You gonna tell them what the experiment is? What so we're gonna what do? we are gonna do now is with this Bunsen burner. Is it a Bunsen burner? I don't know. It makes fire. It's, it's a off Bunsen torch, burner. Know. Blowtorch. Yeah. We are gonna heat the pans up. Try and get them to. The same temperature would be nice. Yeah, we'll give them what we want. Right, basically, we're gonna we're gonna heat the bases up. Yeah. Yeah. Heat the base up. We will check them with the heat gun before and after. We'll give them the same amount of time on the Bunsen burner. All right, and then we'll give them the same amount of time cooling. Then we'll recheck the temperature, and we'll see which one performs best. Right. There's a few problems here we can address, other than just us. Um. Obviously, there's one aspect is heat transfer to the water, which I would have liked to go on into you with and showed you how good heat transfer is in the water. But the guns obviously works on a laser. Laser. So I'm pretty much going to be measuring the bottom of the bucket. What you're saying is that experiment gets a little bit beyond our capabilities in the Yeah, universe. we don't have no mercury. Right, whatever, we whatever we heat them up at. Yeah. We call the same amount of time. Yeah, but how long do you think? You think in 10 seconds? 10 seconds of fire. Ten, well, we can. if there's any more than 10, we're going to struggle to keep counting. I'm not taking my socks and shoes off, man. We'll go to 10 seconds then. All right, 10 seconds that. of heating, 10 seconds of cooling. Then what we'll do, we'll check the bottoms of both the pans. We can check the air in here, because we'll be end up taking our jackets off. Oh, well, no, it's, it's too got hot. too hot. It's got too hot. All right, you just have to believe me when I dip my hand in the water. Got a boost leak, mate. Yeah. Ready? One, two. A few moments later. Ten seconds. Thirty-nine Celsius. Hit the fan on. One. Ten seconds. 
22 Celsius. Caution! He's a little bit warm to be fair. <laughs> air to air. One. A little later. Ten seconds. 40 Celsius. Put him in the water. One. Moments later. Ten seconds. What does it say? Seventeen. Seventeen. The water feels no different. No different? No different whatsoever. One degree. One, one degree. degree. Yeah, it's not a great one because it's a laser. Laser. They're on for uh, the mercury. One degree. So what we're saying is water to air cooling is far more efficient. The simple way to put this is you stick your hand in the toaster. All right. Make yourself a pan toasty. There's two things you want to do. All right. If your toaster's out in the garden, you run around waving it like If you're in the kitchen, you turn the tap on, don't you? You stick your hand under the tap. Come on, put the toaster under the tap. All right. So, yes, air-to-air -air cooling does work. You burn your finger, you wave it. If there's a tap there, you will go for that tap before you go for a wave. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, yeah. I All right. I mean. That's why we run a charge cooler. Now, if we take one little quick step further. If you want to. Not really I've been asked a few times. A lot of people say, oh, run a charge cooler to keep them cooler. Why don't you find something cooler than water? Well, other than me, there's nothing else cooler than water. I was going to say, is you're going to struggle to get Will Smith in that. <laughs> right. A lot of people say, why don't you use methanol in your charge cooler? It's closed loop. It'll be fine. Few reasons. Number one, you have a knock. You bust a line. Yeah, all right, it's closed loop, nothing to do with the engine itself, but you hit the car, you're gonna blow methanol all across the motor, and we got a turbo on a roast hot manifold. You're going up in flames. Stupid idea. Number two, yeah, methanol is very cold mm, in. Not when it's in a. Sealed. Sealed unit, yes. When it's open state. You had a bucket of methanol here right now. Stick your hand in there, pull your hand out, it feels cold. Quite simply because methanol has a lot lower boiling rate. All right, so the minute you pull your hand out, it evaporates. And it's the evaporation that makes you feel cold. No different than when you sweat. Well, in a charge cooler system, it is a sealed unit. So it's not gonna evaporate. I'm going to be no colder. There are, I think, two other fluids on the planet that I've heard of that could possibly challenge water. One was basically, they might as well call it unobtainium. Unobtainium? Unobtainium. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You won't get your hands on it. And the other one was just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh, you know, no, I can't remember what. Maybe. There was only two, I think. Maybe. They're both ridiculous. They would either destroy all the alley, or be flammable, or they're unobtainium, and pound for pound, water is your guy. Do you also like about water? Something very clever about water. Freeze it, expands. All right, heat it, gas it, expands. Clever, very clever stuff, water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Water in its solid state will float on top of water in its liquid state. Clever stuff. Take it for granted. Huh? I like it. So we're gonna buy an intercooler now. <laughs> Thanks for watching our demonstration. And I hope you might have learned something. Please definitely comment what you thought about it. Why did you catch fire? Oh, there wasn't enough fire. Right, tell them what we gotta tell them then. Go next door. Knock. Give the link. Tell them to click and acknowledge. Like and subscribe.